In this lecture, I'm going to be talking about using composition contrastive learning for sentence embedding. And so I'm going to be focusing on this paper in 2023. Vector representations of natural language are ubiquitous in search applications. Recently, various methods based on contrastive learning have been proposed to learn textual representations from unlabeled data by maximizing alignments between minimally perturbed embedded of the same text and encouraging a uniform distribution of embedding across the border corpus. So differently, we propose maximizing alignment between text and the composition of their phrasal constituents. And we consider several realizations of this objective and elaborate the impact on representations in each case. Gao performs a, an ablation study of textual augmentations things like cropping, synonym replacement, and etc. I find that training on these pairs hurts downstream performance on semantic textual similarity task. Instead, they observed that minimal dropout noise can be used to create positive pairs on the fly. and empirically results in stronger uh, representations. This is a subsampling strategy, and these subsampling strategies are used to expand the training data set or illustrate on the left hand side, as you see, the bidirectional row indicates positive pairs. These brackets indicate span, these are spans from one to two or two to three. And all the other pairs are standard in batch negatives. And this operation, like tensor product, is a, is a shorthand for the augmentation strategy integrated with the framework and depicted on the right. So along with the dropout noise, examples are decomposed in the input space and constituents are independently passed through the encoder and the results CLS tokens are then aggregated and passed through a linear projector before computing the contrastive loss. So I have a playlist for contrastive networks and contrastive loss as well as non-contrastive loss like BYOL method. So I don't uh, repeat all of those ideas. Contrastive learning aims to learn vector valued representations of data without relying on annotations. And meaning is derived from those representations based on proximity to other points in the same space. For example, two images of dogs will be closer in space than a dog and a chair. Several works have theoretically verified the utility of representations derived from contrastive learning and showed that SimCLR can even outperform supervised counterpart on CV transfer learning benchmark. In SimCLR and SimCSE, the learning objective is like this loss. And this ZI and ZI plus are just a vector representation of your input and its corresponding augmentation. Tau is always the temperature. It's a hyperparameter you can tune. But there are some drawbacks of influency. It is evident that influency uniformly repels examples in the mini batch besides minimally augmented positive. Consequentially, the resulting embeddings show poor group wise discrimination, especially in language since it is likely that different examples in the batch can have different relative similarities to a given anchor. Another consequence of this unsupervised influency objective is dimensional collapse. 
of course this dimension collapse is less stronger than full collapse which is which is very which is worse but dimensional collapse is is less significant in comparison to full collapse so qualifying their presentation space we use these two losses alignment and uniformity for example these two have more alignment but also we want to distribute overall over the regions of hypersphere so we want uniformity as well and in practice there is a trade-off between for example some models are here some models are here because it's a loss of alignment uniformity for example and this alignment so for example BYOL could be here SimSium could be here so any model any paper could be in one of these directions but of course this is the perfect area that no one has reached yet has reached yet so specifically it requires just one additional forward pass that is ultimately compared by a non-trivial reduction in convergence time beginning with the corpus of unlabeled sentence we consider xi plus only the latent space as a compositional representation a simple way to curate this is to uh, split the tokens in half and encode the left and right fra phrases independent forward path of third encoder and linear projector. As I said, after obtaining the respective CLS token representations, then we aggregate them and then we give them, so we get, we get the corresponding positive examples. And the training objective for single pair is then uh, the same. And so this is just the aggregate of them. And to explain the motivation for decomposition, we can consider an example from the development subset. So a man is lifting weights in a garage, a man is lifting weights. So there are two semantic atoms at play in the first text. A man is lifting weights, a man is in garage. Similarity between between the two texts can only be considered high based on the first atom. It cannot be said that there is a general relation between being in a garage and lifting weights. So a garage is, is equally, if not more likely to be related to cars, parking or storage. Yet this does not preclude a connection between them. It is only through composition of both atoms that they can relate the two. Thus, there is a need for sentence encoders to learn more generalized phrase representations to at least implicitly abide by principles of semantic compositionality. So we leverage a pre-trained discourse parser to, exact, to extract atomic semantic unit from each unique example. So we typically uh, typically simple phrase or clauses. And we have three kind of strategies to expand the training set, as I said. So you either use adjacent spans or they're sampled by taking each unique pair, such that there is no overlap between the inputs. You can use overlapping and adjacent pass spans that are sampled by taking over overlapping pairs. You can have overlapping adjacent and subsuming spans are sampled by recursively partitioning the elements in half, maximizing the lexical overlap of extracted input samples. And it's an impact on the representation spa space, a consequence of expanding a training space with some samples is the presence of harder in batch negatives. Prior work has demonstrated that this is generally beneficial to contrastive learning. We measure the uniformity and alignment of representations obtained for the development set to understand the effect of training with additional subsamples. So as shown in this figure, as I said, there is a trade-off between uniformity and alignment loss. Each article is in different uh, point in this figure and uh, any of the subsampling strategies can bring non-trivial improvement over unsupervised CMCSE in both alignment and uniformity. 
specifically expanding the training set with subsamples adjacent, overlapping, and subsuming encourages a more uniform embedding distribution. On the other hand, foregoing subsampling for just the compositional augmentation, which is a naive partition, achieves better alignment while retaining the uniformity. So you miss something if you get something else.